Crash. Fly. Repeat. Have you seen a sporting event on television and felt completely different in real life? I have until now. But a live sports event made me feel its true essence by showcasing its heart, passion, and enthusiasm. Jali Katu. A bull embracing sport which happens in South India, in a state called Tamil Nadu as a part of a festival called Pangal. Pongal is a harvest festival celebrated to thank and express gratitude to the gods and nature for helping farmers in growing higher-yielding crops. Celebrated over four days, Pongal falls on the 14th or 15th of January each year. During the Pongal festival, the Jali Katu event happens at different places in Tamil Nadu. At these Jali Katu events, the bull owners bring their trained bulls and on the other side trained players get prepared to finesse the bulls. Whomever among the player and bull shows skill and control, wins and gets the prize. But the prize isn't what most people are there for. It's for showcasing their skill to manage the bull and feel happy when their hometown name gets recognized for the victory. The players also showcase their grit, bravery and courage while having the street smart mind to manage the risk and reward on the field. It's a true underdog story because the sport involves lots of time, effort and risk even though comparatively it lacks awareness, event optimization and technology indulgence. But the total number of Jali Katu events happening in a year is hard to track unless you are an insider. Since most of these events are organized offline. The Jali Katu event I went to is located in Tamil Nadu in a place called Kurangulam. Unlike regular events where people have a place to sit and watch, this Jali Katu event doesn't follow those protocols. This Jali Katu event happens in a place where it's completely surrounded by houses and buildings of common people. If you want to view and enjoy the event, you will have to gather in the buildings of common people and take a place. Since I'm an outsider to this place, I'm still not sure based on what criteria the house owners allow people inside to view the event. But when I say people gather to view the event, it's people of all ages. From handheld babies to people in their mid-twenties all the way up to old-age people swagging up the event without two fucks given. The genuine curiosity and intensity of the live audience enjoying the event was surprisingly shocking because priorly I didn't know people were this much interested in watching Jolly Katu. The event started around 9.30am and ended at 4pm with no breaks. Even though there wasn't any break, the crowd didn't reduce. Even though the sun was hitting hard and straight to the ground, people weren't looking for a shelter to hide. They were there to view and enjoy the event. Inside the event, around 800 bulls from different places participated. And players who participated were divided into 10 to 11 unique batches. Different sets of bulls get released for each batch and the winner of each run, either the bull or the player, gets the prize then and there. Usually, the prize is a silver coin or gold coin with a household item. But the prize gets increased when the level of bull competition is high which gets recognized by the bull track record from the past and announced in real time by the commentator. The rules allocated by the government for Jolly Katu gameplay are, if the player embraces the bulls by hanging to their hump and runs along for 15m by distance or 30 seconds by time or else sustains three jumps of the ferocious bull, he wins and gets the prize. If not, the bull wins and the bull owner gets the prize. The participants shall not be allowed to hold on to the tail, or horns or even restrict the bull's movement by holding on to the bull's legs. Participants violating these guidelines shall be liable to be debarred from the sport for a lifetime. The common scenes you will find throughout the gameplay are, the bull owner cheering for their bulls to come out, each bull coming out in their unique way, different players taking the front space for each run to finesse the bull, players hitting the ground on a few occasions. But when it happens it's a hard crash and finally, and the winners actively collecting their prize. Batch after batch the same energy was kept, and the desire to win from both the player and bull owner side didn't drop a bit. They wanted the win. But the players are smart enough to know when they don't want to play the round. There were like five to six bulls, the players didn't even mind playing. Out of the 800 bulls, there were few disqualification events. Mostly it happens when two players ride a bull or when the bull comes out with the rope or if the bull owner interrupts the player. They only get pongo wishes as sarcastic humor from the commentators. The commentators' humor and dialect are one of a kind which gives entertainment and perspective to the event. On very few occasions non-registered players or players from the previous batch sneak in and try to catch the bull. 
but they are immediately recognized and sent out. To participate as a player in the Jolly Katu event, the participants have to register ahead of the event and the participants should be between 21 and 40 years of age and should submit proof of their age. Also, if the players were found injured during the event, they were immediately sent out. The one thing that fascinated me was the friendship displayed on the field. I'm not sure about how much bond there is between players of each batch. But each player has someone who looks after them and gives them a hand when they are in a not-so-safe spot. They pull them out, they get them up, and they cheer for them. If you want to show someone what having someone's back is, you can find tons of examples here. Out of the 11 batches, each batch felt different. In a few batches, the player seems to win more and in a few batches the bulls seem to win. The last few batches were happening at rapid speed, making it super fun to watch. But the event wasn't narrowed down to the playing field. The enthusiasm and energy of the live audience kept the event on its foot throughout the day. Since there was no proper view or infrastructure of the gameplay from the ground, people had to climb to view what was going on in the field. It wasn't the optimal way, but it was the scenes of that day. But the event organizers and police force made sure no accidents happened. A quarter mile away from the event zone, the action was still on. The bull owners get back their bulls, bull owners travel back. It was all happening. Paraparapa which means moving in an energetic and busy manner is the word to define the behind the scenes of the event because if you stand in place, every five minutes, the scenes of the place would completely change. It was uniquely different and a moment of bliss if you had come from a city landscape background where group festivals are not a thing you experience. People in this town are built strong in all age groups. Yet they were very kind, generous and respectful for the time we spent there. The Jolly Cat Sport is said to have originated during the Tamil classical era, which lasted from 400 to 100 BC. And it is a practice by peasants to safeguard their purebred, indigenous bulls. It seems like, if Jolly Cat wants to climb the ladder of sports, it needs some high-grade production, storytelling, event optimization and technology indulgence. I feel like an underdog and I felt like I can improve the production quality and storytelling of a Jolly Catu event more than what it is now, and you are watching the outcome of it. I hope you found this video enticing. If you like to be aware of global cultural events and information with super sleek production quality, follow us on YouTube. You can also message us if you have any collaboration ideas. Thanks.